Approved for all audiences? I'll be the judge of that. This is Preview. So last episode was kind of a downer, huh? Yeah, sorry there weren't many jokes and stuff like that, but I was pretty bummed about not liking the Interstellar trailer. I still am, but that's not important. What's important is that we don't repeat that. So we're going to eliminate all the reasons I was disappointed. For this episode, let's look at something I don't care about. Something that won't dishearten me if I don't like it. Something that is completely unattached to a movie I'm excited for, and especially something that doesn't have to follow the legacy of previous great trailers. That's fine, I didn't want to jump soon anyway. Let's just turn this up. I come from Earth, a planet of outlaws. <sighs> so the trailer begins with the same joke as the first trailer. Star Lord. Who? Star Man? Legendary outlaw? Forget it. Stop, stop, stop. Please, no generic action music. The first trailer was so fresh, playful, and unique. Please don't fall back on cliche epicness now. Oh god, the genericness is building. I can't watch. So here we are. That music is... Music to my ears. Anyway, we're back in business. The second Guardians trailer expands upon its predecessor in pretty much every way, as a second trailer should, but at the same time, it manages to keep the core of the original preview intact. That's actually my favorite thing about this trailer, and I noticed it very early. Just like the first trailer, this one realizes that the Guardians are an obscure bunch, so some introductions are in order. Luckily, this time, we can shorten it down to a quick list. A thief, two thugs, an assassin, and a maniac. Rather than dedicate a third of the trailer to it. What the trailer does have to spend some time introducing is the story. Much like how the first trailer's lengthy character explanations were a necessary evil that they managed to salvage, this very to-the-point plot section is far more pleasant than I would expect. This is mostly thanks to a smooth transition from the character part, very quick editing, and a bare minimum of exposition. It isn't cumbersome, which is critical when you're working with such a groovy song. Well, yes, it is 2014, you're right, and, and, and maybe I should have used a different word instead of groovy, but you know what? I don't have to explain myself to you. I, mean, I'm, I'm, I make mistakes, I'm human. I'm not like a space raccoon. I mean, we, we can't all be space raccoons. We can't all be voiced by Bradley Cooper. So with all that pesky narrative out of the way, it's time to montage. Oh. Yeah. This is definitely the best part of the trailer. It's more than your average montage in a few ways though. It isn't all fast action cuts, for one. It kind of slows down for a bit, which would have been jarring if they hadn't picked such visually interesting and atmospheric shots to linger on. The second way it's unique is in its use of dialogue during its montage sequence. Now this itself isn't rare, but usually for me, montage and dialogue are two of my favorite things that are, regardless, best kept apart from each other, like Christopher Nolan in Casablanca. No, you see, Victor Laszlo is my husband. And was, even when I knew you in Paris. Can we agree that was like a thousand percent better? Like, I think I should rewrite the joke, I mean, that was just superb. In this instance, though, the dialogue is snappy and short. It is in complete harmony with the tempo of the trailer, so, like before, it isn't cumbersome compared to the music. Speaking of the music, their mix of Spirit in the Sky is excellent. They added a second track to play on top of it, which, along with some sound effects, makes it have more of a punch and seem to move faster. This allowed them to get an action-y vibe out of something that is originally very laid back. Their music eventually completely takes over to bring us a pretty sweet climax, which leads to... Just to recap, you are currently watching a tree watch a cassette tape. No, no, actually, you're watching someone review a tree watching a cassette tape. These are good times to reconsider your life decisions. So, trailer, where do you go from here? You've reached the peak of excitement. What could you possibly do to get the audience back in it so you can finish strong? Ah, put down a this was the moment the trailer completely won me over. 
It shows a complete awareness of how great and popular the first trailer was, putting all of my concerns to rest about it being disrespected. It's an encore of the first's use of the song. Actually, it's more of a curtain call. I mean, look, they're even bringing everyone out pretty much for another bow. Yeah, this is a curtain call. Except it isn't live. So they just felt like a curtain call was deserved before we were even cheering. <laughs> that is so self-indulgent and arrogant. It fits perfectly. Also, we get more lines from Kaiser Raccoon over here. I'm not a rat, Agent Kuyan. That was exactly what I needed to cheer up a bit. It's fitting that the first follow-up episode I've done for the show is covering such a picturesque follow-up trailer. Now, could the trailer itself have been better? Yeah. Is it as good as the first Guardians preview? No. But this feels like the trailer that should follow up the first. It feels like the natural successor. And it's perfect in that regard. Like I said, that's personally my favorite part about it. I just wish the trailer makers knew how much I appreciate that fact. I wish they knew how much I want to thank them. <sighs> Stay hooked on that feeling, Guardians of the Galaxy trailers, because I am in love with you. You'd better not break my heart with a third trailer, you son of a-